Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's Professor Williams again. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to calc calculate a correlation coefficient and a covariance using Excel. So the first thing you need to do is enter your data. Remember that um, when you're entering your variables, here I have the number of tornadoes in a year and then the number of deaths reported from tornadoes in that same year. Remember to um, enter them in a single column, one variable per column, and remember that uh, this 81 and 45 is the pair of observations for the year 2008. So once you've gotten your data in, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the function uh, bar in Excel, and I'm going to double click on FX. So what you're going to get is you'll get a menu um, where you can search for a function. So I happen to know that I'm looking for a correlation coefficient. So I'm just going to type that in, and then I'm going to hit go. And so here I can, every time I scroll down, um, when I go on another one of these functions, it's going to give me a nice little explanation down here of what that function is. And so that's the one I want. I want the correlation coefficient between two data sets. And so I'm simply going to hit OK. So it's going to give me um, a function argument, which is basically just telling Excel how I want this calculated. And so array one is going to be tornadoes. Array two is going to be deaths. So I put my cursor in that box, come over here to my data. I'm simply holding down my left mouse key. When I get to the end of my data, I'm simply releasing it. So same way you would highlight any cell in Excel. Array two is going to be my deaths. I'm going to do the same thing. And what you'll see is that before many before Excel has actually finished with its calculations or put it into any kind of uh, cell, it gives you your answer here. It'll give you down here formula result. All right, so I know that I have a correlation coefficient between the number of tornadoes and the number of deaths of 0 0.0238 and a bunch rounded to whatever. Um, it also will always show you the values um, that you used, that it used to calculate the formula. So when I finish this out and hit OK, it's going to go ahead and just put it out in a cell. Um, and it picked that cell because that just happens to be where my cursor was located. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to the function menu where it says insert function. I'm going to double click again. This time, I want a covariance. So you can uh, narrow down what it selects from if you have an idea of the category. Well, I know that covariances are statistical. So now I could scroll down through all of these zillion um, functions that Excel has, except instead I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to start typing in covariance. I'm going to hit go, and again, it's going to give me three options for my formula. My first option at covariance.s is saying returns the sample covariance. Well, that's what I have as sample data. But if I had population data, I would use this covariance.p. That's pretty consistent with Excel. If you have a formula dot s, it's going to calculate that formula, treating your data as sample data. If you have a function dot p, it's going to treat your data as population data. This formula right here, COVAR, is for those of you who may have Excel 2007 or earlier. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got um, s. I got my sample covariance formula. Um, Highlighted, I'm going to hit OK. It's going to want me to do the exact same thing. It's going to say 
what are your two arrays, which is basically just saying, what are your two variables? And so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to get deaths, right? I've got my function argument in. You'll see again that before we even hit the, um, the OK button, right, it gave me my answer here. 3.1 bunch of sevens, probably ran that up to 3.18. Right. Um, and then it verifies that what you calculated was the sample covariance, which is simply the average of the products of the deviations for each data point in the pairs uh, in a two variable data set. So literally, I'm going to hit OK, and there I have it. I have my covariance here and my correlation coefficient here. And honestly, there's no better way to do this. Hope you guys have a great day.